Hi. <laughs> well, um, Anna has presented us. We've got some sexy names and last names, quite exotic, <laughs> hard to pronounce. Uh, well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here um, presenting this project. I'm going, to, well, I, I come from Santander. I work at the headquarters in Madrid. I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the bank and the context that uh, somehow helps shape the project before the, the, the interbrand guys tell you go in, in depth into the project. So you probably know Santander, you know, we, we've been here in, in the UK for more than a decade serving clients, so I guess you, or at least most of you know us. Uh, let me give you some figures, or just, just if you can just see these, we, we're, we're in many countries, we're a pretty large organization, We've been in business for, for a long time, um, and this makes things quite complicated, but that's the way the bank is. That's what we have to, have to handle like every day. In terms of um, challenges or things that somehow shaped the, the project, I'm going to start with something that the Monso guy some, somehow mentioned, and it's the financial crisis that started in the US in 2007. That had an impact on the business, but not so much on the business. What was really key and important, and, and we're still suffering from that, is the reputation. You know, people, well, don't like banks generally. I don't know if they did before the crisis, but <laughs> they, they, they don't <laughs> like banks now, most people, even though we still have, as you saw, loads of clients. So that means that people still come to us. They, I guess they feel we give some sort of decent or service, there's something in the banks that people need, at least. Uh, so, you know, that, that's, that's something we're working on and it's, and it's tough, but, um, but we're kind of recovering in some markets, which is, is good news. Also, digital is it's, it's a key challenge for banks that have been in business for so long. It also affects other industries, but, but we've been somehow involved in this digital transformation which has an impact, obviously, in the way we serve clients through our digital channels, but also in the way we work internally. We need to, well, there's new tools, and we need to connect and interact with people across the world. So that's, that's something that's, that's moving quite fast, um, but was really a challenge 10 years ago. And even though we're, we're really into that, still uh, a challenge for, for the bank. And, um, la for, and, and lastly, I, I wanted to point out the new players. This is somehow a challenge, and at the same time, I see this is as, a, as a great opportunity for banks, you know, because having new competition in the market brings innovation, you know. So it's, again, a challenge and an opportunity. We've got here fintechs, we've got uh, big techs, you know, you've got, we've got like Amazon and Google, uh, lending money to their customers and so I mean I, I guess they're probably not interested to become banks because it's very tough to be a bank you know we've got regulation and I don't think they want to move into banking but but they're obviously a, a, a challenge uh, we also have um, yeah the, the, the big techs and we've got um, well it, it's, it's a very dynamic market and there's lots of things happening there and, and it's something that we need to to look into and pay attention. I think it's great that, that customers have choice, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that these people have entered the market and again, you know, they're a challenge, but I think a great opportunity for big retail banks such as us. And internally, I wanted to point out a few things that have happened and have changed the way the bank is, is doing things at the moment. The first thing is, it's Anna, our new CEO, she's, she's been the CEO for around five years now, and she had a very different view of the world that her successor had. Um, that had loads of implications in terms of the role of the bank in society and so on. She came obviously with ideas, um, with a new business strategy, the way we, in which we do business, but what was more important for the brand team was was the culture transformation that she led. You know, she knew that the role of the bank in society had to be different. It needed need to shape around the idea of the bank being an organization that helped businesses and people to prosper, to advance, to, to do the things that they wanted, and, 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 and the bank should be a player there. And that was 
really important for us in the brand team because that made us think or rethink the experience that we were offering to our clients. You know, and this is where the project that Lucas and, and Borja are going to present, you know, how we started rethinking our brand, the branding assets that we use, and, and how that all sort of shaped. Um, so, Borja, please. Yes. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, no. Okay. So, um, I'm the guy with the weird name, Borja. It's tricky. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the expression. So, this was very much a challenge, a uh, creative challenge. So we want to present the font in the context of, the, of a bigger change and then in terms of uh, the whole expression of the brand that then impacted on the, on the experiential side of, uh, of, the, of the brand. Um, working with Santander is a big responsibility. You saw the figures, big bank, long history, a massive amount of uh, customers, many countries, many cultures, many languages, many teams. A strategy that uh, gives a lot of power to different countries. So that means that they, you know, to align all these cultures, internal cultures, is quite a challenge. So it took us almost two years to test and to work with different teams in different countries. And then Interbrand itself, we got involved with different offices. So it, it took a, it took a long time because it's a it's a huge organization. We were facing a bank with a long history, as I said, you know, a bank that started as a local bank in, in a city in the north of Spain, in Santander, then became uh, regional, then national, then international in the, in, the, in the 1990s and early 2000s. They started buying other banks, expanding internationally. The flame was born in uh, 86. The red color was born in 89. The, they went through this rebranding for a short period of time, then they went back to this identity, so I'm getting the down into identity right now, and this is you know since 2004 and then 2007. This is what we took on board in the project and started we to work with this. So, um, how do you um, bring uh, modernity and progressiveness into the into the bank? How do you align the culture, and then how do you incorporate all these challenges that Juan was talking about internal and external, digital, new, new millennials? We came across this study that said that 75% of the consumers uh, of the millennials would rather go to the dentist than to the bank. So that was you know, very uh, illustrative of, uh, of the challenge. <laughs> and uh, so uh, this is where we took it from. Um, and then a new strategy in place to help people and businesses prosper. So the whole prosperity thing uh, in terms of making community uh, and allowing and facilitating communities to prosper and to grow. There was a, a strategic mantra, so this is the purpose of the, of the bank, and this is something that we also uh, uh, work with, uh, with the guys in, in Santander, along with the, with the new um, brand values, which are simple, personal, and fair. Obviously, going down into the font and the work that we did for the font is, is hard to, to reflect these ideas into a font, you know, but we, wanted and we knew from the beginning that having a sim you know, simplifying and streamlining the identity of the bank was a, was a big uh, task. And this is, uh, that was one of the first um, tasks. You know, we, we run a, a visual and experiential audit throughout the bank in all the regions, in all the markets, in different cultures. They were using many, many ways of communicating. I'm just illustrating the font and the, and the, the, the t different types they were using uh, across uh, each market, but then you, you could uh, apply this to any aspect of the expression, you know, whether it's uh, photography, illustration design, um, pictograms, uh, formats, uh, key visuals, and stuff. Uh, so uh, we run this um, visual audit and be because the fact is that the bank was, even though the monolithic architecture was there and then and that the mantra of the, the strategic mantra of the father of Anna, who was the former president, was you know, a unified brand. Right now the strategy is the opposite, but then at the same time we wanted to streamline and to facilitate a better understanding of the brand and what the brand stands for in terms of uh, of uh, brand values and, and strategy. So as you can see, many many brands, many business units, each one with the, their own marketing efforts, language, uh, tone of voice, uh, visual expression, experiences that didn't match with each other, different uh, speeds in different markets, because in the US it's a small bank, in, in Spain it's huge, in Brazil it's huge, but then Mexico is medium. So how do you uh, align all these things? 
And then what we found out it was a massive amount of formats and ways of talking and communicating in different aspects. So in a global uh, situation, in a global market, how do you streamline all these things and make sure that the people understand that in one single uh, message, and this is done wonderfully by the, by the team of Juan in Madrid because they, they are the corporate group, but they are separate from the, so they curate more or less what each country does, but then they allow them to, to be free and do what, what they want to do. So big challenge in there in, in managing the brand uh, further down the line. Uh, after that, when we uh, started working, and this is just illustrative of, because we were posing the question, how, you know, what degree of, of the, uh, development we should, uh, uh, we should take on uh, how, how, how drastic and how uh, disruptive the journey should be for the bank. So we went through different uh, options and refinements on, on the symbol. And you can see four here, and the fourth one is coming up. So from the most uh, evolutive to the most uh, disruptive, then we said, you know, in terms of symbology and color, we have a big equity, lots of heritage on the, on the red and the flame, so we stay there, but then how can we communicate this, uh, this new bank, this new digital uh, real, uh, reality for the bank? You know? So we use uh, many other elements in the brand expression to do that, and Lucas is going to illustrate you with, uh, with the word that we did. Okay, thank you, Borja. So now I'm going to show you the new visual identity of Santander, and it all started with the, with the symbol. So we had to refine this symbol uh, in order to make it more suitable for a digital environment. And we started with an uh, underlying grid. And I know that usually when you see an underlying grid showing how a symbol was built, it's basically just sitting there to show off and not doing anything at all. I mean, <laughs> but I swear you, it's, this is not the case. Uh, we actually used this underlying grid. And this was also the base for building other uh, visual elements of the brand. So the grid is made out of uh, perfect triangles with 60 degrees on each side. Then we drew some, uh, some uh, diagonals and uh, oval shape. And here you can already see the symbol uh, taking shape. Then we added some, let's go, okay, some, uh, some circles, uh, proportional circles, in order to make the curvature of the flame. And then you just paint it, voila. It looks quite <laughs> easy and simple, but it took us a while to figure it out, okay? <laughs> Two years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two years. So that's the symbol at the end. It's more balanced. Uh, it works better on the digital, uh, digital environment because when you, we compared with the old uh, symbol, now the counter shape, the white space, go all the way down. So when we reduce the symbol, uh, it's more visible. As you can see here on the comparison, you can see how it uh, reduces better. So OK, the symbol was done, but now we needed to do this, uh, the same for the word mark. And we had already agreed with Santander that we wanted to shift from a serif to a sans serif. But we didn't want to just speak in typeface and type Santander name in. We want to make something with more personality. And this is where Monotype comes in. We joined forces with them. They flew to Madrid, and we worked side by side with them to create a, a word mark from scratch. And it was all based on the symbol. We took the cur curvature of the symbol, and we added to the letters. So you can see on the, on the endings of the S, you have this uh, tiny and slightly curved. I mean, it's a small detail, but it's there. And this helped build all the other letters uh, of the word mark. We also took the tip of the flame to make the counter shape here on the bottom of the A. So there's a lot of details on the word mark that it's all inspired by the symbol. So after a lot of experimentation, those were the, the finals, the, the competitors. We were trying uh, a double story A, uh, curved on the bottom, a uh, round curve on the shoulders. And at the end, we decided to go with a flat base, with a single story A to stand out. And on the top, everything uh, curved, so the I goes smooth on the, on the word mark. So here you have a before and after, and this is the final result. Now the logo stand out uh, a lot more. We completely removed the, the red box, so now the logo is free. And it, it works really good on, the, on white backgrounds. Of course, we also have the negative and positive uh, solutions. Both works uh, really well, although the white one is the preferred version. But we didn't stop there, because Santander in some countries, they have a lot of names. 
Because sometimes they buy a bank, and because of legal reasons or strategic reasons, they add the name. So, for example, we have Santander, Santander Rio, Santander Group. They also had Santander Tota. So we developed the whole alphabet for the logotype uh, typeface. And not only that, they also have sub-brands. So we developed a light version, a lightweight, of the logotype uh, type, typeface. And now it's an it's a easier uh, system, so they can create and manage uh, sub-brands more easily. Both uh, logotypes now are uh, responsive. So in the larger spaces, like signage, they're going to be used in a single line. On smaller one, in two lines. And even smaller, just the flame. And for sub-brands, they have the flame, a line, and the sub-brand name. And this is how it's organized right now, the brand architecture. So it's easier to manage and easier to maintain the consistent uh, within the company. Then we move to the colors. There was a lot of red going on, quite heavy. And we decided, OK, let's make it uh, an even balance between white and red. So now it looks lighter. And we also added, here you cannot see, but this is a, a light gray, kind of bluish. We call it the sky color. And this uh, was supposed to make the, the layouts fresher. And here's the grid system again. I, I told you we're going to use these for other elements. Uh, and here we were uh, developing the illustration style. So we took the angle of this, uh, this grid, we took the flame uh, shape and also the oval base, and we developed the illustration style. Here's quite, uh, uh, you cannot see the background, but here's already, uh, we were using the new color palette. Uh, it's a mix of the organic shapes and geometric shapes as well. We develop a set of skin tones for the different countries they're going to, to communicate. Also, um, objects, landmarks, so they can customize depending on the country. We also have a complete set of uh, library of uh, characters, so they can combine the way they want. And more than that, something we were missing was pictograms. And we also used the same grid line as for the symbol to build the system for the pictograms. And we also based the, the shapes of the pictograms with the, with, with the word mark. They can be used field and outline. And when they are filled, they uh, become an illustration on their own. So this is the first set we build uh, on the, in outline and also field. And Juan told me that right now they already developed uh, 400 more than in-house. So the system is working. That's a great sign. <laughs> So passing to uh, photograph style, they were also missing some direction. So in order to, to reflect the prosperity idea, we now uh, parted people looking up, uh, wondering, thinking about the future. And when they are not thinking, they're actually either doing, like putting their hands to work, or they are on the move. And here we were using uh, a metaphor for the prosperity over time with growth, with the st staircases. And with this idea, this was the link to build a layout system in order to make a, a layout that uh, was flexible and they can use in all their, their communication. So if Santander is here to help people and business to prosper, this moving up idea, this was the base for the layout system. We developed a modular system, uh, quite flexible, that helps the hierarchy of information. So they, it separates the content from the photography. They can use the, uh, this staircase device on the bottom, on the top and even in the middle, splitting the, the layout. We have, or of course, we develop a whole guideline on how to use it on vertical, uh, horizontal, and square uh, spaces. So at this point, Santander had almost everything done. Uh, logotype, colors, uh, illustration, pictograms, photograph style, and a layout system. But there was still something missing that was interbrand, uh, inter no, Santander's voice, uh, a typeface to be used uh, the, in the whole globe. And this is the where uh, monotype comes in a second time. Because we only had the Santander logo typeface, and it was not done for uh, text. It was not working. And then we joined forces to uh, solve this task, and we created two new styles, Santander headline and Santander text. So for the Santander, you can see that they have uh, a lot of similarity with the Santander logo. For the Santander headline, the structure of the A and, uh, and the N the R are the same for the logo, but for the text, we changed. We used a, a double story uh, A, and this, the shoulders on the N and the R uh, are there. They're different. They're not curved. 
So in that way, when you use it on uh, smaller sizes, it uh, improves readability. Uh, the, another difference is they are more condensed than the Santander uh, logo because they need to, to work on uh, billboards, uh, annual reports, and also on uh, tiny uh, legal texts. So in, with this solution, now they are, uh, we are optimized space uh, and we keep, uh, we keep the content on it. Well, we also, uh, okay, now I, now I noticed. We're missing the font here, so the headline should be bolder mm -hmm. because the, the tracking of the headline is tighter and, uh, and the spacing of the text is looser. So this is everything we developed for Santander. We developed two weights for the logo type, two weights for the headline plus italics, and three weights for the text plus italics. And here how they, they work together. So we have the logo typeface, you have the headline, and you have the text. And you see, even for uh, small legal text. And after this Helvetica Now presentation, I think we need to create also a micro version because it's really small. And this is the overall uh, overview of the layout system with the new typeface and how it's being implemented on offline materials, also on digital environment, uh, for banners with motion, and for example, on uh, Merchandising materials, now they're not so logo dependent. They can put their own message with their own voice. And they're also using for signage, and it's really nice to see a typeface come into life in a 3D device like this. And now I have a small video clip to show a little bit more of the process of the typeface. <laughs> So, um, well, from, uh, just to finish, um, to, from theory to practice, um, you know, this is how now the Santander brand is and how we are trying to bring that to life, uh, the new strategy, you know, through new sponsorship strategy, you know, we were big on Formula One, for example, very aggressive, very bold, very, very different from now, you know, that now they are to, um, very much into soccer teams, into La Liga in Spain, into championships. Uh, so this is uh, one way in which the brand is reinventing itself and its speech. Also, World Cafes, you know, they are also reinventing the retail and their environment and allowing communities and people to meet and co-work and and, um, and and activate this idea of the prosperity, as well as the uh, Santander Universidades, which is not coming up. I don't know why. But, uh, oh yeah, there you go. Community, sorry, communities, there you go. Uh, so through their program of universities are helping uh, people in uh, on not very favored environments in different countries to, and they are uh, giving scholarships and making sure, you know, that uh, communities thrive and prosper. So this is how they are activating and this is just, uh, I, I wanted to show three examples on how the brand is reinventing itself in, in, and, and, and you know, putting into life and bringing into life this new, this new mantra. Okay, so that's, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>